Hello everyone, I'm so excited to let you know that we just released a new feature that lets you create JavaScript files and write full page JavaScript codes that can be used and reused everywhere across your applications. This is a total game changer and we're calling this feature JavaScript object or JS object for short. JS objects are still in beta right now, so you can expect to receive improvements and more goodies coming along the way in the next few weeks. So are you excited to see this feature? I'm sure you are. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without further delay, let's get started. Alright, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you three ways in which you can use JavaScript objects in AppSmith. But in the coming weeks, I'll make more videos to show you other tips and tricks and cool use cases for JavaScript objects. So make sure you get subscribed so that you do not miss any of these videos. So for today, the first tip I'll be sharing with you is on storing static values using JavaScript objects. And to show you how to do this, I'm just going to create a new JavaScript object file. You can see now that we have a new JS object section in the Explorer tab. So go ahead to click on the plus button and that's going to create a new file. I'm going to call this file utils, for example. And right here we have some static data, so I can delete all of this and go in to create a new static value that will have users. And this is going to be an array of users having the username and also the email. And we have this value stored. So we can go on to use this value across multiple places in our application. So to show you how this is done, I'm just going to head back to the page and bring in a new select widget. So we have a new select widget right here. And for the options, I'm just going to make use of the data stored in utils.user so utils is the name of the file we just created and user is the key having the static array of users and we can go check this out and you see that we have all the users showing up in the select widget and the reason why this is really cool is because i can go in to bring a new select widget and also make use or reuse the static users array we declared earlier so this is going to be um, utils.users and you can see similarly that we have the users shown in the second select widget. And the reason why this is so powerful is because I can head back, for example, and make an update to the user array. So for example, this is John, I'm going to say Paul, and update the email to Paul also. And heading back to the application, you can see that Paul has been updated on the list for the first select widget. And the same also goes for the second select widget. We also have Paul showing up. So we did not need to go into both select widgets and edit the values. We just needed to update it in one place and everywhere that references that value has been updated. A second cool use case when it comes to static values is that you can use static values to store things like API keys or authorization tokens in your app and reuse it across places such as queries, API calls, or wherever you need to in your application. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Let's head back to the JavaScript file, and I'm going to create a new um, entry for a key, for example, and this key is going to be a string that has my API key. And I'll be using this API key in API 2 and API 1 we have right here, because both APIs require an API key. So what I can do is I can go in and reference the API key I just created. So this is utils.key. And let's head over to API 2. And this similarly is going to be utils.key. And you can see that this works because I can click on the run button and you see that we have some data coming in. So we have the API key stored in the JavaScript file. And similarly, we can reference it from multiple parts of the application. The second tip I'll be sharing with you on using JavaScript objects is data transformation. And this is illustrated using the table we have right here. So in this table, we have some data being displayed and you can see that we have a lot of columns and this is just so messy. So we can fix this in two ways. The first is we can manually go in to um, hide the columns we do not want visible and probably go in to write some JavaScript to perform transformation for these dates so that they are more human readable. That's one way we can do it. But the second way we can also do this is using a transform function stored in the JavaScript object. So let me show you how to do this using the transform function. So for example, we can head back to the JavaScript object and create a new function right here and use that function to perform the transformation and then have that data 
that has been transformed returned back to the table widget. So let's create a function right here in the JavaScript object called transform. And this is going to be a function. All right. So this function is going to take some data as a parameter. But for debugging purposes, let us pass in some default data that will be used to test out this function as we build it out. So let us pass in getMovies.data and we can go in to start building out this function. So this function is going to return an array uh, that would be generated from mapping over each item and performing some transformation. So each item is going to be an object and we will shortly um, describe the shape of this um, object. The first thing we want to pass back would be a title. So this is going to be the dot title. All right. The second thing we want to pass back would be a rating. And this is going to come from D dot votes underscore average. All right. And we can test this out by clicking on the play button we have right here. So we can see that we have some data coming back and we also have the rating and title displayed here as well. We can go in to perform some man manipulation on the rating. So for example, I can make this over a hundred percent by man multiplying this by 10 and adding a string that has the percentage sign. And we can go back to test this out. And you can see here that we have some percentage going on. We can also return back the release date. So this is going to be date. And this is going to come from D dot release date. And taking a look at this, we have the date coming back, but this is not human readable. So we can use the built in moment library to format this, for example. So this is going to be moment. And we can do a dot format here and pass in the format we want to use. So we can use the long format. And lastly, we can also return the URL, which will be coming from the dot homepage. All right, so let's test this out. And you can see that we have a title, rating, date, and also URL showing here. So we can make use of this in the table. Let's get rid of the default value that was being passed in. And we can head back to the table widget right here and make use of the transform function. So here we would um, take out the data that was being fed into table widget and do utils dot transform and then passing that data as a parameter to the function and going back to the table you can see that we have a much much cleaner table showing up right here we have fewer columns which are all the columns we specified in transform function and this is how you can do data transformation using javascript objects so the last tip i'm going to be sharing with you today is on how to run multiple actions using JavaScript objects. So right here, we have a simple form that takes in a user's name and email. I want to touch that when the um, save button is clicked on, we actually go ahead to store that user in the local store, make an API call to save the user in our backend, and maybe perform some other async functions. So in order to do this, we can design a JavaScript function in a JS object to do all of these actions in a single click. So let's go in to um, create a new function. By the way, you can also create multiple JavaScript files. So you can click on the plus button to keep adding multiple JavaScript files as much as you would want to. But let's head back to the utils file. And lastly, let us create a save function that will take in some user as a parameter. And then um, it would perform the save action. So when this function run, the first thing we want to do is to store the user in the local store. So let us use the store value function and we want to store the key user and pass in this user data as what we want stored. The second thing we want to do here is that we want to also go to make an API call to save this user. And for this, I have this save user API that can store the user. So let's say save user.run and when this is successful, we want to show a message using show alert and say user saved. And this is going to be of type success. Secondly, if this fails, we want to show a message that says could not save user. And this is going to be an alert type of error. 
And lastly, we can pass in the user data as a parameter to this API call. Then we can go on to perform other actions that we may like to perform. For example, we can go to run my API one dot run, for example, and similarly, we can do my API two dot run and we would have everything working fine. So let's head back to the form and wire this up to the save button right here. So when this button is clicked on, what we can do is to make use of the utils.save and then pass in the user as a parameter to this function. And this user is going to be an object that will have a name, for example, and the name is going to come from the first input we have here, which is input one. So this is going to be input one dot text. And similarly, this user also have an email. And this is going to come from input two dot text. All right. And we have the user object. So we can test this out by typing in some name, for example, John and some email at do.com. And we can click on the save button. And you see that we have the success message coming up. All right. And these are three ways in which you can use the JavaScript object. Like I said earlier, there's a lot more you can do with JavaScript objects in AppSmith. So in the coming weeks, I'll be making more videos to share these tips with you. Don't forget to get subscribed so that you can catch all of these videos as soon as they come out. All right. So that'll be all for today. Take care until I see you next time. And bye-bye.